Hello and welcome to Clarinet Ninja. Glad to see you. We're going to talk about tension in our clarinet playing. We all know it's bad. Everyone says things like, don't bite down. Release the tension in your throat. By the way, we don't use our throat when we play the clarinet. Number three, you know, like, oh, we can't hold too much tension in your tongue. Well, people don't say that all that much, but they should. But here's the problem. We don't ever mean to put tension in our playing. We never do it on purpose. So a lot of the times we can linger under the belief that it's not there. Because we didn't put it there. How did it get there? It found its way. Tension is contagious. And if you have it one place, it's going to seep into other places. If you got it in your finger, it's going to go you know, all the way up your arm, into your elbow, into your shoulder. Before you know it, it's everywhere. What do you do about it? I got you. I'm going to tell you. All right. So we got three quick, easy. These are exercises I would say fit into the goof around category of playing the clarinet. So they're fun. They will give you a result of tension release, even though you don't even have to think about it. Here they are. I've got a theory. This is entirely my own, and I'm excited to share it with you. And that is, there's two parts of our tongue when it comes to clarinet playing. And they relate to how we talk. There's the way that we make a consonant sound, and that is with the front of our tongue, the tip of our tongue. T, D, C, S. That's the front of our tongue. The vowel part of our tongue, the A, E, I, O, U, that's back here. It's back here in some place we can't even really say where it is. At least I can't. In any case, so there's the consonant part of our tongue, the vowel part of our tongue. I've got two exercises that will release the tension from those two different parts of our tongue and our voicing. This is going to help our articulation. This is going to help our sound. So the first one is about the consonant part of our tongue, and it has to do with rolling our R's. Some people can't do that. It's unfortunate if you can't. I wish I could help you. I cannot help you with that. But if you can do it, you should be able to do it while you play the clarinet. Let me show you. So I'm going to play an F scale from low F to high F. I'm going to play a regular note first. Now with my rolled R. Now an F scale. Yeah, there it is. All the way through, low F to high F, rolled R's all the way. There are times when I'm practicing my regular scales. Because, you know, if you practice your scales every day, you know this as well as I do. It can get kind of boring. You've got to put challenges in them. Changing articulation, changing this, changing that. Sometimes I just start rolling my R's during my scale practicing. Like this. And I just do that. What does it do? It frees up the consonant part of my tongue and it insists. Wait till you do it. Check it out. It means that you've got to be really supporting properly. Uh, it's, it, 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 it insists that you do that. And so for, to get it to work, you have to do that. So it's going to help your air. It's going to help relax that front part of your tongue. Two good things. What about the vowel part of your tongue? Let's get to that. So now this is a little bit more complicated because there's different ways to do it. And that is to sing while you play the clarinet. What? Let me show you. This is something that Jethro Tull became famous for playing the flute. Is the person actually Jethro Tull that's playing the flute? I don't actually know that, but the band Jethro Tull. Is Jethro Tull even a person? I, I'm freaking myself out now. It's not important. But here's what is important. You can actually use your vocal cords. And so, like this, this like what I said before, we don't use our throat when we play the clarinet. We use our voice. That's a different space, right? The part of our body where our voice comes out is not the part that we swallow. They're in basically the same place, but they're different parts of our body. So we want to free that part up. We want that to relax. That's the vowel part of our tongue. The A, E, I, O, U. We want to make sure that that's not a part of our clarinet playing. We separate it from our clarinet playing by doing it at the same time we play the clarinet. 
It makes a crazy sound. Check it out. So that's just me screaming a note. <laughs> Any note. Right? And so this is where this gets to be a very flexible exercise. You can sing the note you're playing. You can sing a higher note. You can sing a lower note. It depends on where your voice fits. Uh, it, can, it can be a fun exercise to see if you can sing the note you are playing. And that actually opens up uh, a larger range that this works on. If you're singing a very low note and trying to play a high note, things get a little crazy and it doesn't really work. But this is just a fun way to goof around and see what you can do. So I'm going to try and sing the notes that I am playing. Easy notes. Now I'm going to sing it an octave up in there. So I'm singing the notes with the notes and then the other ones I was singing an octave up. The resonance works very interestingly. So now I'm going to sing just a low note. Just a random low note while I play some, some of the C major scale. Now I'm going to sing a high note. It feels crazy. And I'm actually... If I were to make a sound that I'm making when I'm doing this without the clarinet, it would be bananas. It would be just streaming, kind of, is how it feels. Because again, this exercise insists upon having a strong airstream. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. So, but this is relaxing. It's not really relaxing that part of, of your, because you could actually get very tense doing it. But what it's doing is it's making you play the clarinet without that as a component to making the sound. So any tension that is there isn't actually a part of playing the clarinet, which is different. I, I'm not encouraging you to be tense and scream while you play, but it does require, my point in talking about it is it does require a certain bit of juice to make that happen, at least for me. Uh, but this will not work that well in extreme registers. The, the, it disrupts the airstream in a way that makes it kind of impossible to do it, at least for me, in the upper register. Uh, it gets really weird for me up above there and I can't sing that high so I, I believe if I were singing those notes they would come out but I can't get my voice to go that high because I've got one of these so uh, yeah so there it is so there, there's two things this part relaxes the vowel part of our tongue, the first one, the constant part of our tongue. I've shown you this one before, but it's good. And I'm going to show you again because not enough people have watched the video. And this is where you block the end of the clarinet with your leg and you play a long B. So all of our fingers down plus the register key. Things get a little out of tune and a little weird. But again, this is a goof around. Like you just fool around. And in this fooling around, you're going to have to use really good air. That one requires some really nice support. All of these require support. And it's relaxing. None of this is possible if it's tense here or anywhere else, right? So we need the support. And using that kind of support can add tension to our plane that we don't mean to add. And that's where this tension that we're trying to get rid of actually comes from. We add tension that we don't need when we are working on part of, of our kind of plan. That it's not, people don't say it like this, but tension is required. Tension is not the word we would use. Like support. If you support, you're engaging muscles, which is in some way tension. But don't use tension, but support. These things get very, very complicated. So all of this work is to separate that out and figure out what we need for the support and what we can let fall away. And these exercises will allow it to fall away. I wouldn't goof around with any of this for more than about five minutes a day on each exercise, and that would be a lot. Just a few times a week. Just 
fool around. Check it out. See what happens. See if we can implement these ideas in our scales and the work that we're doing on the planet every day. Thanks for stopping in. I hope this was fun. And I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.